Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter six is sum of numbers. So assume that a file containing a series of integers is named numbers.txt and exists on the computer's disk. Write a program that reads all the numbers stored in the file and calculates their total. All right, so we are going to assume that a file on our, on our computer um, is called numbers.txt. We have to create it first because if we don't, then the program will have difficulty trying to locate this file and, and read from it. And so we're going to create this file and basically this file is going to have numbers. So we're going to store a bunch of numbers in there. And we're going to write a program that's going to basically calculate all those numbers, add uh, basically add them all up um, and then display the, the sum, the total of the, basically the total. And, ca and calculate that total. Alright, so <clears throat> sorry. So let's go ahead and create the, the text file. Um, I'm going to use text edit. All right, so this is the for the for the previous program that I did. So I'll close this and create a new a new um, file for for text edit. So um, on on Mac I'm going to use text edit, but on Windows you can use Notepad. All right. On Mac, make sure when you're using text edit, go to preferences and in the in the format section, make sure it's set to plain text. Because if you don't set it to plain text, then if it's on rich text, for example, then Whatever you have, uh, you know, as your text will, will have extra formatting behind the scenes that you don't see. And when you try to read your text, it's going to have that extra formatting, which is going to make it look a bit awkward, right? And it can give you problems. So make sure it's set to plain text. Windows use Notepad. All right, so in this file, I'm going to type in a bunch of numbers. I'm going to just type in a bunch of random numbers on different lines. All right, this is enough. And I'll save it as so. I'll go to chapter six, programming challenges, and I'll create a folder in this chapter, um, chapter six, and I'll, I'll call it sum of numbers. And I'll save this file here as numbers.txt. Okay, and I'll save it. So I'll save it right here. Save it. And so I save the numbers.txt text file in that folder. That's the same location where I'm going to save the file. Okay, as long as they're in the same location in the same folder, I can just refer to the name of the file without any path or anything, and they should be able to see each other. If not, if for example I save my numbers.txt file somewhere else, then I need to tell this tell the program where the file is. I need to basically type the entire path. All right. But if you keep them in the same folder, then all we have to do is just refer to the name of the file and then they should be able to see each other. <coughs> Alright, sorry. Okay. And so now we have the file. Now let's go ahead and create a main function, right? In most programming languages, uh, the main function or the main method is basically where your program is. It's, it's basically the function that calls every other function. And so let's define, or it's a good idea to create the main function that is going to have our program. Now it's, it's a function, so once we create it, we have to go ahead and call it. So let's define a main function, right? And then let, let's have our program in, in here. So the first thing we want to do is try to open this text file in read mode because we are going to read from the file. It just came to mind that in the previous uh, um, programs where we dealt with files, I only closed a few of them. I know for sure the last program I didn't close it, but it's fine. Sometimes um, it will work and sometimes it wouldn't work if you don't close your files. But <clears throat> So it's also a good idea to close your files. Anyway, we'll get to that in this program. All right, so let's open the file in read mode, and I'm going to call the open function, and the open function takes in a couple of arguments, so it's going to take in the file name. I named it numbers.txt. Uh, this has the extension .txt, and so type in numbers.txt. Make sure you type in the extension, and I'm going to type in, provide as a second argument the letter R in double quotations, R standing for read mode. I'm opening this numbers.txt file, in read mode. Now you can also wrap single quotations around these and it should work. Now anytime you call the open function, it returns, oh sorry, so basically it, it creates a file object in memory. Anytime you use open function, it creates this file, it creates a file object in memory, right? And that fi file object is returned, all right? So let's create a variable that's going to refer or reference to a uh, reference that, uh, that file object that's created in memory by this open function. <coughs> And so I'll call this file, I'm going to call it numbers file. And I'm going to set it equal to 
the file object that was created in memory when I used the open function to open this numbers.txt file in read mode. And so numbers file is basically representing that file object. Okay, so once we have the file, now let's try to read from it. Now in the previous programs, I've, I've, what we've done is we've read one line from the file. We've checked to see if that line is not empty, right? If it's not empty, that means there's something in that line. We use that line and then we read the next line. We check that line also to make sure that it's not empty. And if it's not empty, we use that line and we keep on doing that until we reach the end of, file, on the, end of the file. We use a while loop for that. But there's also another way. There are actually you know, several ways to read from a line. There's another way to read from a line. It's actually, people say it's actually more elegant and more simpler, I guess. Um, I, I use both of them, but I use the, the traditional, the, the while loop more, the while loop to, to read a line and make sure it's not empty. I use that one more than this, but this is also a very simple way to read, just read lines from a file. And I'm going to use that with a for loop, right? So let's do that. Um, we can still use a while loop and it's still going to work, but, but just to change things around, I just wanted to use a for loop to read read from this this from the from the file in this particular program. Okay, so I'm going to create a for loop and I'm going to create a variable that's going to rep represent each line that's read from the file at a time. Right? So I'm going to call it line and I'm going to say so for line in numbers file the the, the variable that refers to the file object. So for line in numbers file, what's going to happen is this. This simple line here, well it's not simple, but this st straightforward line, <laughs> not straightforward, th this line over here, right, for line in numbers file is basically a for loop that's going to iterate, it's going to basically go through the file, read 2 and store it in 9, and you can use it, and then after it's done, it reads 3, and then stores it in line, and you can use it, and then it reads 4, and then when it gets to the end of the file, it stops. Just by using this for loop, it just does that, you don't have to you don't have to check anything, it does that automatically. So that's why people say it's elegant, I guess. But both ways work, whether you, whether you use a while loop, you, you read a line uh, manually, you check to see if it's not empty, you use it, they're all the same. This is, all, this is also doing the same thing, but it's doing it automatically for you. You don't have to do any extra step here. You just call for line in numbers file and it reads each line at a time. It does that automatically. When it reaches the end of the file, it, it stops. All right. So what this is going to do the very first time is it's going to read 2 and store 2 in line. Now we, we, need, we need to do something with 2, right? We need to basically do something. We need to add all these numbers up. So before we do that, let's create a variable outside of for loop and call it total, right? And total, let's set it initially to 0 because before we add them all up, right, we want to add all the numbers up, we, let's set total to 0 so that when we read a line, we add it up to total, okay? Anytime we read a line, we add it up. We don't change it, we add it up to total. But when the program starts, total is zero. And so for line in numbers file, what we want to do is we want to add the line that was just read to total. And then we read the next line, and we add it to total. And then we read the next line, and we add it to total. So so, so on and so, so forth. 